absolutely. All right, folks. Well, while uh, Diane does her thing, what I wanted to do is bounce back over to this discussion, which is the item about uh, community support. So we need to come up with some language, and I'm assuming the docs folks would be the ones most appropriate for that, at least to have a template or something that we can bring the larger group. So we could put it in, actually in the discussion here and modify it, or we could do it as something in GitHub, as just a, a document in GitHub. Um, any thoughts on that? And again, to, to provide context, this is again to, to um, clarify the support model for OKD, uh, because we've seen an uptick, a significant uptick in folks reaching out directly to Red Hat employees, in particular Vadim, uh, asking for support. He got another email uh, a couple days ago from someone directly uh, asking for support. And so what we want to do is make it clear. Um, and this also has the benefit of um, sort of inspiring folks to become a part of the community because they can see that, that they can help others and they can see um, a way in which to participate through helping others and answering questions and whatnot. So what do you think? Can we do this in the discussion thread uh, on GitHub or do we want to do it as a document and folks add edits? Or do we just want to do this in a, in a, you know, a hack file or what? How, how's the best way to come up with this text that we want to well, paste everywhere? Actually, I have a question on how could it not be clear? Uh, like I, I think the support model is the same, like going back to Slackware, which is, you know, like where I started pre-kernel 1.0, um, you know, with any open source project the, that had companies attached to it, the support model was always that the companies weren't there. You, you wanted support, you bought it. And if you were going with open source, you supported yourself. And you could ask questions and people might help you, depending on how friendly the community was. Um, so, like, I, I, I'm not against clarifying things, but I think it would be hard for any living person not to already be clear. And, and so, I, I, yeah, I, I don't, anyway, so I don't know the, the next question is, that? like, where do you go? Okay, so it's not, so I, so I think that clarifying things is maybe not enough. Um, because n n no matter how well morals are understood, you will have rude people. So then the question is, what do you do with them? Like, well, how do you but, so gently what you do is correct you them or gently this. bring it to their attention? Right, and that's what this can do also is, is it it's, it's gets ahead of things, but it also allows us to point to something for the people that choose to reach out directly um, or choose to somehow, because it's also going to clarify time. That's the other thing I should mention is this would also say that, you know, as I've posted in the channel to folks before is that this is as available to, as the people in the community have time available, right? So this is something that we can point to after the fact as well. So if someone m mistakenly, let's say mistakenly thinks that um, it should be Vadim or other Red Hat employees, or mistakenly thinks that that um, they have to be responded to at that moment, uh, then we have something to point to and say, well, here's this statement of, of our, and it's only a couple sentences, but a very right. concise couple sentences that lays this out. My thoughts. I don't know. Mike, yeah, yeah. what do you think? No. I mean, I think this is like a really tough situation in general for open source communities, right? Because like, on one hand, I totally agree with Bruce. Like, there, are, no matter how many messages we put out, no matter how clear we make it, like, do not contact these people directly. You're always going to have people who are still willing to just write an email directly to Vadim to try and get his ear, right? And I certainly don't want to put any of this on Vadim to say, hey, Vadim, you need to tell people no more often, you know. But certainly, it has to be okay for Vadim just to ignore these emails or anybody to ignore these emails. Um, you know, yeah, like I would like there to be a place where we could direct people and maybe there's also a behavior pattern that we need to accept as well, which is like, you know, for someone like like a Vadim who's getting a lot of bandwidth on this, there needs to be an easy way for him just to push a button and redirect that person to, you know, input your question here, create an issue, do something 
But like, yeah, Vadim is not your personal enterprise open source consultant that you can just email anytime, you know, like yeah. we, we have to make that not acceptable community behavior. Right. So it might be that we have a paragraph blurb and then a page that's literally like the three things for support and there's nothing else on it. The email list, the channel, and um, uh, putting an issue in, right? Like those would be the three ways in which someone can get support. So literally just a community support page, right? And then we have right. the paragraph and then that paragraph of three sentences just contains a link to the community support page. And that's and make it I mean, that clear, you know. Yeah, I think we have to have a link to the issues form, like right there, because like if someone's gotten to the point, yeah, hey, and hey, uh, welcome, um, Michael. Um, yeah, like if someone's gotten to the point where they're already writing an email to Vadim, like that person needs to like control Z on that email or like control C and control P all that stuff into the form for yeah. an issue instead. You know, it's like, we yeah. need to get that to be the pattern of behavior. Right. So right. The, the other thing I would add in here too, is that there's a little training on Vadim's part too. Um, and and I think we all fall victim to this, um, that we, we wanna help, right? So Vadim in the past has answered questions that probably should have been answered by the community. So there's a little bit of training on the part of the Red Hatters as well. So, um, you know, and, you know, we all want to be heroes, too, so, and solve people's problems. So, I think there's a that's little the bit. That's the tough of, part here. Yeah, that's, that's the hard part. And then our day jobs get in the way. Um, so, and Michael Burke, thanks for joining, because I was trying to remember who was the Michael B. And look <laughs> all of the Michael B.'s in Rover to see who was working in Docs. And I couldn't come up with anybody. There were Sorry two. about that. That's all right. Uh, now I know. So, that's, that's good. Yeah. So, um, I, Jamie, I really like the idea of having a support page. Um, I think that's that's helpful um, and and really sets it up. And the more we drive people to that Google forum or to the um, to the Kubernetes OpenShift users or dev, the better off we all are because there's more pe people there to answer questions other than Vadim. Um, so and the quicker we are to respond like as in before Vadim wakes up, um, I think, you know, there's, that's, that's going to be, or Vadim or whomever, Mustafa or whomever steps into the foray um, as we, you know, grow on and mature. It's also training the Red Hatters too, to say, to pause, take a breath and maybe forward it to someone they think could answer it, whether it's Jamie or Bruce or John, uh, John Fortin or, or Joseph saying, hey, could you take a look at this? So there's and Vadim has been forwarding email to the working group, actually. Yeah. So he has he's, been doing it, which is good. We've broken him. That's how <laughs> we've broken Vadim. So it's, and if you're listening to this, Vadim, we hope you are healing on a, a vacation cruise. And somewhere. we love you. <laughs> we love you. you know, the, but, um, so I think it's, and I'm using Vadim as, as a point, but this happens in every open source community is that, you know, the founders of a, you know, who else now is a CTO or CEO of a, some startup will answer something. It's just, or, you know, you'll get. But anyways, yeah. I think the, the proposal that Jamie has about creating an, maybe, and I'm thinking on okd.io, an explicit support, and this is what you get, and this is all you get, right? And, um, and maybe at the bottom of it, general surgeon's warning, this is a community sort supported um, initiative. It is not, you know, a, yeah, whatever, but like yeah. the general surgeon's warning, I think that's a yeah, that, that's Diane? Yeah, just to follow up something else you said, though, that because um, you mentioned hero and uh, be aware that in absolutely every single hero myth, without exception, the hero dies. Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Okay. Hopefully the, the hero gets to retire in our storyline. So, right. um, yeah. it's, yeah. so it's probably not a good one to emulate. Yeah, so the thing that happens at Red Hat is not they don't get to retire. They get promoted and go away, and then we have to retrain somebody else. So the more we Should we switch over to Michael Burks and, and, and handle that, and then maybe, maybe we can come back to this because we yeah, want to be respectful. Good. Yeah. So, um, and I'm just going to blather on again, um, Jamie, even though we said you're running the meeting. Um, so, Michael, one of the reasons um, from last week's um, full working group meeting that I expressed was we would like to be able to do um, some pair reviewing, this like, like pair programming type thing, 
um, of the OKD dot the docs.okd.io stuff to start with, with um, Mustafa, who's just joined Red Hat. There's about, I don't know, 16 or 17 new Red Hat engineers that are going to be run through um, OKD Working Group over the next six months. That's We are the training ground. So we're trying to find um, good tasks to train them on. Um, and one of the, thing, the out things, and I think I said this last week, so I know I'm repeating myself, um, is to take someone who's experienced deploying somewhere um, and pair them with one of the newbies and walk through the documentation to start because there are things in or I remember seeing things in docs.okd.io um, because it's just um, generated from the baseline OCP docs that were references to things that were inappropriate like rel core OS as opposed to Fedora core OS or some some form of support did thing that we don't as a community have access to whether it's a, some cool operator that we we lust for um because that's where we're at um or you know something but just tro trolling through um a section of the docs um and the questions we had and where we wanted your participation was if we find them what do we do Right. What's the best way to communicate them to Michael Burke and the docs team to get them fixed? Um, and that's what we don't know. And that, that what I was thinking was to do um, a three-way pairing, so a trio, and have Bruce, Mustafa, and Mike do one section together. And then, Mike, you could say where you wanted it. You, know, you could see what they were finding and see what kind of um, issues tracking system we should either set up or use always remembering that some of these people are going to be external to Red Hat so that's the caveat with the technical documentation that is docs.okd.io is that is generated by Red Hat for us um, so I'm going to stop and tell me if you have any background in or ideas about how that workflow might look like that would make those changes happen rapidly probably the best way would be do an issue in github in github Maybe. there's a label is it docs only there's it, a label in there i can search on yeah and who who's watching that i guess what does that what action does that trigger is anyone watching that i don't know that anyone's assigned to watching that expressly but i can make it a point to do so so and the docs they live in the openshift github repo yes yeah so maybe um i don't know if you could do me a huge favor of sharing your screen and going to where you see the docs and where that issue would be logged the best place okay because dan thinks there might be a uh, a caveat in there somewhere. Caveat. Let's see. So we can figure out where we're supposed to go here. Okay. There you go. And thanks everyone for bearing with me on this one. I'm just, I've seen multiple sets of docs in my time here. So. Hi, it's good for us all to be on the same page and kind of understand where these things are. So yeah, I appreciate it. While he's doing that, I'm going to get more water. I'll be right back. It's two feet away. All right. Can anyone see my screen? Yep, I can see it. Yep. Yep. So this is what I was thinking anyway. OpenShift.docs repo. Find an issue here. That and I've been subscribed to that for a while, and it gets a lot of updates. That gets a lot of tickets in on it. Yeah, uh, for sure. Yeah. Click on that OKD only. Uh, this one? Uh, that one. See what we get. Click on. Zero, zero open. So. Now the other question I have for you, and this is really just me being redonkulously um, naive about how docs are generated. If you go to docs.io, 
www.okd.io mm -hmm. and you find an error, where is the source for that? Like, it should be here. So, so like, is there one that's, there's an OpenShift desk docs and then there's a repo that so, is just OKDs? No, source is right here. All well, comes from here. So there's like just a different make target for the OKD uh, docs or something. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we can use we use uh, if def statements to qualify something belongs only in OKD or something doesn't belong on OKD. So if you could j just do me a favor in one of the another tab, um, open OK docs.okd.io, and let's just find something that is OKD specific. Ooh. One, two, three. We're doing okay now. Yeah. Docs.okd. And click on the documentation. I'll take you right there. Click the version, the latest. Oh, this and... one, I believe. I think this is specific. This is specific to OKD. So if I found something, like if you searched in here for um, CoreOS, I'm just trying to find something to make one. Of course. Or just um, Fedora, maybe. Or CoreOS is the thing that I think is Hang on, what's the It's something to this page, it's different. Yes, you know what's new. This is the regular OpenShift docs. Yeah, so now you're in the OpenShift that. You're not in the OKD, you Correct. bumped out. So, so this is the OKD docs. Yeah. So this, so, type, this book is not in, this book is OKD only. All right, so the, the so this book was made from the OCP stuff, or is it a yes. separate? Okay, so let's, let's, I mean, I'm just trying to find one thing that we could make log an issue on and see what happens. Um, so, um, you could do a quick search on Arcos, which I did uh, on the OKD docs, and a handful of items come up. Uh, for example, I'll link to one that just has yeah, a mention of Arcos in it, like right there. Yeah, there's one in the, um, here. So, if you look in the chat, Mike, you can grab, just go straight to that. Thanks, Jamie. Okay, what are we looking for? Oh, is... Somewhere on this page. Archives. There. Oh, it's an output. Nasty. So, so part of it is so that that um, sample needs to be rewritten. Um, yes. For us. So, um, and would it be node.okd.io slash osid, or is it just um, node.openshift.io and then fcos? Anyone know? That's a good question, actually. I have to look. Yeah. So, if we so so let's just do it this way. So, Mike, if you were going to log an issue to have this um, looked at and reviewed, how would you do this now? Would you have us do it? So going back. Um. Into, yeah. Go back in. Back into the GitHub. All right. Too many tabs open here. Where do you go? There you are. So go, yeah, go back into here. Take out a new issue. We'll fill out the little template there. Give it a good title. Okay. And then let's let's do one. Let's tag the example is incorrect for OKD, you know, on this page. And I guess my question is, can those labels be added by the submitter? Or uh, is, 
is that uh, something that has is done after the fact by a reviewer? Can we fix it or like? I don't know. Good question. So then you just um, take that example, mm -hmm. and then take the and put in the link that is that um, Jamie gave you. Example rem example references our cause. And then grab the link to the direct link, link. there at the top there. Mm. I think the example needs review. Um, To, we don't know what to change it to. It could just be it could just be as simple as changing RHCOS to FCOS, but I I have a sneaking suspicion that the example might not run if we just did that. I'm not sure the, there's three other guys on here who've, who've run this stuff before, but I think yeah, that it may I mean, be I, as simple. I haven't looked at those labels on the nodes for. For F, you know, for an OKD, like I'm too used to using OCP. Yeah. Let me just log in. Let me see if I can do it real quick by logging into one of my OKD closed. Well, yeah, I mean, if, if either of you has an OKD closed drop, you should just be able to do a get nodes minus O YAML and see it. Right, but under what needs fixing, you don't need the solution, do you? You need the problem. If if we have. If, if we, we have, have the solution, solution we, should, we could we could put replace X with Y, you know, or something sure. like that. So, you know, if you know it. But I think this is where someone in documentation might not know the answer to this. You know, I'm not sure, but I don't know it. I don't know it. So I'm off the top of my head. I, I think it's this simple. And then it could be um, apply the labels to this issue. The kind is documentation, and then maybe add OKD only. Um, as well, so you get two labels on there. Yeah, that makes sense. And then um, for um, bits and grins, um, assign um, yourself, Michael, and me, and um, then we'll see. Then we'll see what happens. Um, I'm not sure. And I'm just I'm just D Mueller. Mm -hmm. 2001. Yeah, there that would be me. Yeah, just for reference sake, uh, oh, Michael has a special one. Oh, was, was that? Jamie, repeat. Oh, that that was me. I was sorry. I was just saying that I I was checking out this the issues on this repo to look at the labels. So Michael does have special permissions on this repo. Like I I'm not able to change labels if I create an issue. So this is something that you know someone who is going to be able to triage will have to go back and like add those labels or whatever. Right. Or unless the bot awesome. allows you to add them. You know. Yeah. You actually need write permission on on most repos uh, to be able to uh, change the labels on. Oh, I did put good. what the proper uh, uh, metadata is in the in the chat. It's uh, Fedora is the OSID type. Yeah. So it's it's not FCOS. It should be Fedora. Yeah. Fedora. Okay. Like that. So, um, so in this pair programming exercise, someone needs to have the privilege to add labels to it, kind hmm. documentation, OKD only. So, um, yeah. Um, and maybe that somebody is. is. Is that something Vadim is doing? Um. Vadim might be doing it. I haven't been doing it because um, I'm not that person. But what I'm going to see. Might be so if we look at the issue, it should be logged. 
to look at the ones that were closed. And if you look at the history of those, it might, it should say label okay. changed. Okay. Yeah. So, so it's, look first submit this one and then let's, so it's there. So we can, we've got one submitted. And then let's see what's been closed with any issues yeah. that were. So I went to one that was closed and I'm looking at it now to see who Stephen Kutz, Kutznetsov is the person okay. who changed it. So the assignee is the person who actually labeled it OKD only for this. Uh, yeah, Steve, that's closed. I'm sure Steve has increased permissions yeah. in that yeah. in that repository too. I have some, but I'm not sure I have that one. But yeah, I don't. I don't have any permissions to change labels and whatnot. They don't trust me that much. Hmm. Sounds about right. <laughs> so um, that that's the kind. Of, so maybe um, if we assign them all to Michael Burke, that we find. I know Mike. That's not going to make you thrilled. But can we can we even create one? Can someone outside can create one and assign it to you? Then you'd you'd get tasked right. with it. Yeah, at least I get notified of it. Yeah, and then you could figure out. Where. Yeah, that could work. Okay, so, um, yeah, so I think we um, caught enough here. As long as we have the right section in the in link link to the section to our doc, put that in, um, and that's probably enough to go on. Um, and then we'll get Mustafa in there, and then maybe, maybe I don't think he has privileges. He's only been with us for four months. Maybe, so um, yeah. So I think that's that's really what I wanted to know and see how it would work. And as long as you're okay to start with being the person tagged for that, and then if it gets outrageous, you can wave a, a flag of truce, and um, we'll we'll figure out something else. And then when broke, um, you when broke redeem, you, now you're going to break me. Yeah, I'm going to try not to. Um, we don't like to break docs people. Engineers, we're really good at breaking docs people. Okay. In love. Um, you know, almost more important. Oh, sh did I say that out loud? No. Um, so, yeah, so that's what I'd like to do is, and I, I was hoping Mustafa would be here, but then we can pick once, pick a date and do this. And then what I wanted to do was have um, a hackathon or uh, hack the docs um, section um, to, to do it because I think we're not, we'll see how far Bruce and um, Mustafa get. But there's a lot of docs in there, and there's some docs that are outside of docs.okd.io that are in random things that we could also start cleaning up. Um, so that's that was my goal. But that's yeah, that that'll help a lot, um, and hopefully I can get them. Bruce and Bruce, are you done with school now, or is it still another week? Um, well, I'm I'm pretty much done with school now. I mean, we we have a sort of meetings and uh, departmental things and whatever, but uh, uh, that's ongoing for the next month. So for all practical purposes, uh, uh, my time is a lot freer. Okay. So let me yep. see if I can do a, a three-way email. Um, I'll CC Michael as well, um, now that we know your last name, um, so that you're on the thread. And then we'll, what I'd like to do is have you guys, even if it's just an hour or two, spend um, together and I can host it again, or if we need to, and, and do it maybe this Friday, um, and and just walk through a whole bunch of them, see how much we can get done in, a, in an hour or two, um, and find them all, and then log a bunch and see how it lands on Michael. Like, and once we have you know like ten or twelve things in there that we found, which would be wonderful. I'm curious, Michael, when the next time they'll rep, these will get patched and revved. Is it every release that we rebuild? Yeah. Um, yeah, right after I merge the changes. It should show, yeah. It will show eventually, yeah, okay. within hours. Okay, so it's not, it does not take long. Very yeah. cool. Um, so uh, that's. The people who don't have the, ability to label the issues they can assign? Um, let me try. How's that? Let me see if I'm going to, I'm going to steal the sharing here. And, oh, please. Uh, and continue. Uh, let me see what I can do here. If, 
if we have the bot in there, you should be able to use slash assign, even if you don't have permissions to write there. So there, there should be a way for people to assign issues. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. It doesn't let me do anything here. So no, I don't have privileges. Um, but I can always do um, like I could always put an at. in the note and that's how i've done it in the past so that you get flagged okay. so works. i think i think that since we can't assign we can you know attention do something like attention just want to bounce this off my uh program manager project manager and just make sure he's okay with it yeah if we did something like that since we can't, and then, you know, that, you know, make a note and mm. at OKD. I don't know what, not any other way, but yeah, that's. So that's. What's your, yeah. get, what's your GitHub ID, Diane? Is D it Mueller, Python? Was Python? D Mueller 2001. So that that's what She's I was very young, very young. Yeah, very young. <laughs> My Google account is very old. Let's put it that way. It's 20 years old now. So. Um, All right. It slash assign works though, because I just I just assigned Diane to that other issue. So. So um, when did you, you got now you got work to do, Diane? I'm going to stop sharing. Show me what you did, just so. Share your screen. Just now. So. I will now. I will share. Um, so this is the. This is the one we just created, mm -hmm. um, and what I did was I typed assign, you know, wow. at D Mueller, blah, 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 and then it, it okay. added you to the assignees up here. Cool. I didn't know that. So, okay. right. Now, I probably can't label it. Like, there is there is a slash label command, but I probably, it probably won't let me do that. Give it a shot. Try it. What, what's, what's another label here, I guess? Do we That's know? Label. Because it's already got OKD only. I don't know if it would remove the kind slash documentation. Yeah, that's already on. Let me just see if there's like another oh. label I could oh. I could grab quickly. Uh, those are all branch labels. Uh, well, okay, like I'll just try putting service mash on there, even though that's not right. <laughs> I put um I put slash the door. Yeah, you can see it doesn't, oh, yeah. it, it has supported labels. So like uh, someone could come in here, doesn't seem like OKD is on the supported labels though. So if we could get OKD added to the supported labels, like I, I could theoretically label this as platform AWS. Um, oh yeah, fine, thank you for that. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so there are, people can do labels. We just don't, we just don't have one that's like, uh, we don't have an OKD label that is publicly available. I doubt I can add like docs approved labels to this or anything. Cool. All right. Well, at least we can assign people to it. So we can assign Michael to, to them and myself. And that way between me and Michael, we can track them all down. So that's actually really cool. So that gets us to the next step. And then the other next step is, um, is getting Mustafa and Bruce together to do a section pick a section and maybe maybe it's maybe not a section but maybe it's to find all the R cause references to start with that would be an easy task to do and um, 
then we'll see how that percolates to the system, Michael, and um, how much headache that causes for you, and you can tell us how much you love us, and we'll still do it anyways. But that's that's what I was thinking. So um, how about if we pause there the, and go back to, Jamie, what you were talking about in the beginning, um, uh, the community support landing page in okd.io, because I have one other question that I was going to bring to you is, I know at the last meeting I said that I would go into the OpenShift-Dev and the OpenShift-User description at the top and put some verbiage in there that said, if you're using OKD, go here. And I drew a complete blank at what that verbiage should be, and I figure this group might be able to. So if you go into Slack, I certainly, I, I look like I had privileges to change that description for some strange reason. Um, so I could do that, and I will share my screen and see if, um, start sharing, see if I can get there from here. Tell me if you can see my Slack. Slack. Yeah, I can um, see your desktop. See my desktop, everybody else is seeing somebody says something they shouldn't. So up here, I, I don't know if everybody else has it, but I have edit privileges here. OpenShift Dev and OpenShift yeah, User. And there, there is nothing. There is, I can add a topic. And oh, I can edit it as well. I can edit yeah. the channel topic. Yes. Looking for, um, okay, these, okay, D. Technical support, please. Check out the OKD working. And then put in the link to the forum. I mean, so that's- You're gonna that's, wanna do that on OpenShift dev, not OpenShift users though, right? Because OpenShift users is the OCP users. Well, it might, it's a mix of both. People show up yeah. in both places. So that's what, yeah. it, and that's why I'm being explicit. If you're looking for OKD, Technical okay. support, go here, right. and I'm just going to grab the, the URL for that. And But, but that's, that's what I was like, that was my, my worry, was that I would be overstepping my Google. And... Don't worry, if you really overstep it, the Kubernetes Slack community uh, admins will come find you. Oh, I know. Well, they know who I am. If you're looking for OKD technical support, and maybe the community, something like that. If you're looking. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just going to copy that and put it. Topic. Then go to dev. See, this one says community support. It's trying to. Hmm. So I, that's why I, I was thinking just put it in the users because this is supposed to see, send them to the users text. I, but, but, how, that whole like there... split between the users and dev channel is, is odd to me because I, I noticed people showing up in the dev channel asking user questions, and when you point out there's a user channel, they're like, I'm looking for developers. I don't want to be in the user channel. Right, yeah. It's like, are you kidding me? So I can I can just add this to it. If you're looking for OKD technical support, please check out the, please, how about please also check out. So it's. And let's let's leave it at that, and then. Oops, it's too long. Yeah, that's pretty long. Um, okay, give me a shorter version of that. Let's see. I'll throw How about, in the chat. Oh, yeah, uh, let's see. Yeah. This is. This is the great screen <laughs> sharing game. The great, yeah. 
Okay, let's see. Yeah, if you take all take out all the you know please if you're doing this and just say yeah like OKD technical support blah yeah uh, or yeah right even take out the please out of that right it still needs the it development is. chat yeah you got to drop your Canadian niceties for a minute here <laughs> tell yeah. people what to do you know let me just see if that fits. And do this. You know, I, I, I have been told that I've been turned into a. Oops, control Z. That's right. You're not a native Canuckistani. You're I'm not a, a native Canucker yet. Yeah. Although you did say control Z, so you're getting close. <laughs> I know. I did that once. Minus five. Just take out working group and make it WG. How about that? Or community led forum. It doesn't even have to be working group forum. It could just be, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Something well, you, like that. Uh, on, on this message, we probably don't have to say community led because you're just trying to get them to go somewhere. Right. And in the description of, of the forum, I think we can make sure it says something like community-led. Right. Okay. Yeah, there we go, yeah. There, is it? There, just under set top. But what's the non, this part here is what's awkward here. Let's just set the topic and let it go for that and see if I get yelled at. Oh, okay. And, and we should uh, review the uh, the the uh, Google group description because it says things like will also include discussion, uh, which it, it does. So will also seems like a... See, I just took out that little phrase at the end there. And let's see if that works. There. Let's see if anybody noticed. See the community led <laughs> OKD working group forum. Boom. Or edit, maybe visit. There we go. All right, I'm happy. I'm happy with that. Group think was well done. And so I wanted. I was thinking about something earlier um, when we switched topics, and like you know, so like we're kind of addressing one side of the issue here in terms of getting in, the information out. Um, you know, where people should go for support, et cetera. But I'm. I was wondering, and I was starting to think about this before. When we were talking about, well, we need to get the red headers on the right page about doing the right thing in the community. But and and so I was thinking, well, maybe we can gather the red headers to talk about this. But honestly, I wonder if we couldn't start making like maintainer guidelines for OKD, right? And then like once a quarter, we do like a maintainers meeting where people who are interested in being like a maintainer in the community, we could just explicitly say like here are guidelines for how we're gonna interact with community members. Like if someone reaches out to you directly and tries to start a support case, like these are the things you should do so that we could help create like a community atmosphere where everyone's on the same page. You know, it's not just like, oh, let's pull the Red Hatters aside and tell them what to do, or let's get Vadim to do something different. Like, let's just get the whole community together and say, look, if you're someone who loves OKD, and you're participating in the community and you're like answering questions for people, you know, we as a community would like to make sure that no one's time is being used exclusively, you know, that everyone's having a good time. And so if you're that type of person who likes to answer those questions, here are some things you should be aware of that we as a community endorse. You know, we endorse your right to say, you know, please don't contact me, you should go to these forums. You know, we 
respect your right to say, no, I can't answer that question. You should go look at this. So just giving the community members tools so that they know exactly how they could brush off. They could, you know, it's totally okay to say, no, I don't want you emailing me, like those kind of things. And then we can start to make it more of like, you know, a community atmosphere for how anyone should be able to interface with this community and kind of have those expectations. I think that's great. And I think that goes alongside the thing which Vadim actually already started work on. Folks notice he posted in the channel, he's created like a how to start troubleshooting guide and he found some documentation that already exists and he started to create some new stuff we need to solidify that on the site and then so that same group that you're talking about mike could be informed or informing and informing of that documentation so that everyone's on the same page of when we want to help folks this is what we need from them and this is what we need for folks to be able to help themselves etc so i think that would pair nicely with those meetings is for folks to talk about that aspect as well because the maintainers and the people that are answering questions or whatever they're going to notice trends that maybe the self-help documentation is going to need to incorporate uh, or added things or added things to the frequently asked questions and whatnot you know so um yeah i think that's a great idea so the yeah, other really, thing really go ahead yeah. Dave. I was going to say, the other thing that um, is not explicitly clear, um, or if it is, I'm, I missed the link to it, is the contribution ladder, like how to become a maintainer or how to become, um, how to get these other privileges. And, right. and because of the nature of OKD's sibling relationship to OpenShift, it's tricky. Um, and so, um, so I think more language to describe the sibling relationship and, um, you know, not so, so much the why, like a bit, a bit of the why, but where, it's, where contribution can be made and how, how do we, re so we're probably not going to give maintainer privileges on the OpenShift GitHub repo to someone outside of Red Hat at this point in time. I, I know I'd like to, I've been trying for eight years. Um, so, and, and and I would like to see that happen eventually, but how do we give people a, la a contribution ladder and recognize people for their contributions, whether it's on docs or in technical support, answering questions or public speaking or workshops and demos and stuff. That's what goes on in my head is that we have, we have to figure out something to recognize people's efforts and to reward them um, and, you know, give them, you know, those, those hero badges and, and pats on the back. And I know I can't do it with t-shirts because I'm so great at getting t-shirts to people. But, um, but, but also, figure out. That actually also helps, Diane, just to point out, that also helps in terms of knowing who to contact for particular mm -hmm. things. Because once people have those descriptors, those labels, then you can say, okay, we need all of the people who are docs people. We need all of the, you know what I mean? It's easier to pull people together for various yeah. tasks. So it's, there's multiple yeah. things that are, yeah. That so I, I, that. Yeah. this is a very good, and I think we're at a healthy point with the community where we have enough people in each of these things. Like we had enough people to do different um, deployment tasks. So we had vSphere experts and we had, you know, the theoretical bare metal libvert experts or, you know, all of, and home lab experts. So we're beginning to have these things. And I, I know Fedora has a concept of badgifying things, you know, where people get a badge because they, you know, I've deployed my home lab, bravo, and uh, thank you, and and or I've I've found a bug in docs, you know, kind of badges. Totally. And it may it may be time for something like that. Um, for at I, this point, it hasn't been in the past, <laughs> but something I think would be nice to put in place. And I know. I'm I'm happy to do some research on that and and come back and even ask maybe one of the Fedora team leads, you know, how they they created their beautiful badges, because um, I also want to I also want to reward people for um, sharing their use cases. You know, if Bruce you do a .edu briefing or you know I've you know I've given I've I've hosted five office hours, you know or whatever, but something, think about it in, in terms of that. And I know that's not the same as the contributor ladder and getting maintainer privs, but I think the community is now at a tipping point where we're not the same 10 people um, 
and we we could be doing something pretty cool um, with that and so that 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 would be my hope that we could figure out something like that along the lines of being more explicit about where you go for support and then the reward for supporting people is you get a badge I answered a question or uh, you know whatever if that's resonates with with you guys I don't want to trivialize no, it's funny. I was just writing that those like exact same words down, Diane, like because I was thinking the same thing as you were thinking. And I was like, you know what? What we should do is we should reach out to the Fedora community people and ask them some of these questions. Like, look, we want to kickstart our community to have some similar features as the Fedora community. And like, yeah. you know, like your thought about the badges and whatnot, like that's amazing, you know? And it's like, I think we could learn a lot from them on the community level on like, how could we structure these things? And then also, yeah, if we could get some technology like badges and whatnot, that would be really cool for people. Yeah, but the, the, there's always the administrative side of it as well. So, um, like, how how much of it can we automate? Like, someone like Mustafa does finds a doc bug. He gets the doc. He gets a little badge that has a, a book on it or a pen on it or something. You know, that it's automated. Like, when it gets fixed or whatever there's, you know there's another we... side to automation too though uh, sorry to cut you off but like because i'm i've been doing a lot of fedora stuff over the years and i still get automated messages for packages that i've worked on and whatnot so there's another side of this too which is that if we start to build like okd community maintainers and whatnot and people sign up for different areas you know we could very easily create automation that says like oh a new issue has been created at openshift docs with the okd only label and it blasts an email out to everybody who signed up for like docs emails or whatever, right? So we could build that automation. So I think the first step in all of this is to, we have the sort of sign up sheet for the working group meetings. Maybe in that document have people select uh, or, or write down as bullet points under their name areas that they're interested in. So, or it, uh, and I should say, and maybe at the top of your login document, Diane, have a list of the different categories and then just have people copy and paste into bullet points underneath their name uh, what it is that they're interested in, like their particular area of participation. Because that sort of forms the foundation of all of this, is finding out what it is that people really want to do. And do we have, we have a lot of people who are members of the working group that are showing up for meetings, you know, 17 sometimes, et cetera. But what do they really want to do and who really, yeah. you know, wants to work on docs? Who really wants to be code? Vadim actually um, pointed out that a couple of uh, issues that came in in the past couple of days are ones that are ripe for people who actually want to start dealing with maintenance of the code base and, and troubleshooting of the code base. It would be good to know who the people are in the working group that actually have an interest in that, as opposed to him just sort of throwing something out and whatever, because then once you have a sense of who wants to do what, you can create guides um, or templates or whatever for the for each one of those things. If you're a, if you want to be a maintainer, here's some things to know. If you want to be a docs person, here's some things to know. Right now, we don't have a, a doc of docs. We don't have a doc that outlines where are all the docs and how are they maintained, who has access, et cetera. People who want to get involved with docs, it'd be nice to be able to just point them to something that says, okay, here, this is the lay of the land moving forward. Um, this is how you can participate, et cetera, for, and then for each of those categories. So, I, yes, all of that is good. And so with the, on the doc side of stuff, my, my initial foray is um, to, get, to figure out the workflow for updating docs.ok.d.io. I thought that was a tangible, simple thing to do. But I do think an overall audit of all the docs that are out there around OKD is something that um, we need to take on, this this little group needs to take on and do. Um, and then, w then from that, that's maybe how we structure the review of the hackathon, the hack the docs. It is like, okay, here are the guides. They're still not over on OKD.io yet. You know, let's, you know, what is this, this chunk needs to belong moves over here. This chunk needs, um, a, we need a community support page, you know, and in the hackathon, someone can work on that and um, come up with the verbiage for that. You know, we need better, more explicit 
directions on the blog, you know, some, something like that, I mean, whatever it is. But that audit, I think, is probably our next big task mm -hmm. of this little bunch of folks beyond um, figuring out the pair programming, pair review stuff. But I think if we do those two things in parallel, um, we could have a midsummer hackathon at the docks for OKD to kick off that. And then we still, then the two tasks that um, Vadim has can help kick off the conversation about who wants to be maintaining the core stuff and reviewing that. And it was, All right, that's we're it. at almost time, so we should probably wrap up. Any last minute things? Last minute thoughts? I, I was just gonna say like, I, I like the talk you're putting down, Jamie, about like kind of this being a foundational exercise in some ways. Cause like, you know, my, my long tail dream, you know, you know, like if we, if we heard Diane's dream in some ways, my long tail dream is I can't wait to see the day that we have OKD community members contributing code updates that are making it all the way into the projects that we have that build up OKD. And, I, and like, for me, that would be amazing because like watching all the vSphere work that's happening in the community and knowing the kind of troubles we have with vSphere behind the, you know, the walled garden as it were, like I want to see that become a reality and I think it'd be really cool to see. Yeah. We might want to do another push to get a few more people on the, in the docs group because I mean we've got Joseph uh, is usually here and I think that's about it is it's sort of been the, the four of us or so, yeah. or so five and of us. So. I usually comes but i think he's off this week for some reason okay. i think he might have gotten because it's a, sh a short week people a lot of people took vacation this week right. and i know um yeah i know a lot of people have taken this week off 